Welcome to another episode of Checking In With Lashings, uh, where we do what it says on the tin. We're checking in with um, the Lashings legends, uh, one and all, uh, that uh, played for us, um, played for us last season and previous seasons as well. Uh, this morning, we're delighted to be joined by the legend that is Don Embry. Morning, John. Morning, Fitz. How are you? I'm very well. How are you, sir? You're looking rather splendid in the beard. Yeah, it's the first one I've ever had one in my whole life. I'm 67 and never been able to grow a beard before, but it was an ideal opportunity to, to give it a go. And although the wife wasn't happy to start with, she said it actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, it looks great. I, I, did, I saw it the other day. Juvenile. I saw Sorry. it the other day on um, uh, one of these sort of Middlesex Zoom meetings I think you were doing. I was watching a bit of that and um, I was thinking... You know, certainly not in Lashing's time, but, you know, watching you on TV through your career, I can't ever remember you uh, sporting a beard. But um, I was thinking maybe Australia, 80s, but no, I just, no, must, obviously, like you say, the first time. Looks well, good. I convinced, myself, I convinced myself that I couldn't grow a moustache. Um, so I never, I never bothered. And I thought, well, we, we're going to be locked down. It looks as though we're going to be locked down for some time. So I got a little bit lazy with the shaving and then I let the hair grow and, yeah, I've got to the stage now, three months on, with a little bit of trim um, occasionally. Um, you're now seeing me look like this. Excellent. Well, I just want to talk to you a little bit about lashings in your, your career a little bit uh, later on. But before we do that, I just want to ask you about lockdown. Because firstly, I, I know that you, in the, the, the winter, the UK winter, uh, you spend a lot of that time in Australia with family. So, so can I ask you, when we actually went into lockdown, were you actually back in the UK or were you still in Australia or, or how, did, how did that happen for you? Yeah, I, I, I went out to Australia in October um, and I got back in late February, February the 23rd. Uh, so okay. just, before, just before lockdown. Uh, but it was quite interesting in Australia because even then they weren't allowing any shipping into, into Melbourne because of the um, people that caught coronavirus on the on the boat in Tokyo, um, and then Australia considered they weren't going to um, accept boats anymore. They repatriated the people from that boat in Japan, and more or less from that moment on, um, you could see things were changing very, very quickly in Australia, and they were seriously talking about a lockdown then. So we were just grateful to get out before they've had it, because we've just heard sure. news today that they're not going to allow any overseas visitors to Australia, um, certainly not until the end of October and perhaps not until 2021. So, yeah, we were very lucky to get out. Um, I know obviously this year is this year, but I know every year you, you go to Australia and you, you have some wonderful times in, in those winter months and getting away from the bad weather here uh, with your family. Yeah, I, I, I watch a lot of the cricket, um, the international cricket, I go on radio over there and yeah. um, do a little bit of commentary, um, some casual work. But, um, yeah, it's basically to catch family. We've got a daughter in Australia, in Melbourne. We've got a daughter yeah. here. Um, and we just try and split up as much time as we can now between Australia and England. Um, but I still have to work um, yeah. to, to, to make ends meet, like many other people. Yeah. Um, you know, so so we're just fortunate to be in that situation. Although we prefer both children in the in the same spot, uh, but that's not the case. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about lashings uh, in a few minutes, but before I do that, I just want to have a little, a few questions about your career. I just got some stats here. It's incredible, really. I know we we talk about it at lashings games as we introduce you into the marquee, but uh, just just a few stats here. So one thousand six hundred and nine. First class wickets um, for Middlesex, Northamptonshire, and Western Province. 64 test matches, 147 test wickets, 61 one day internationals. I know you won the Ashes four times. I think, was it twice in Australia you won the Ashes? Back in 1978 79, when Mike Brewley was captain, and 86 yep. 87, when Mike Gadding was captain. Wow. And as you mentioned there, Mike Brewley. Um, now, Mike Brewley was captain, I believe, for in your early career for both Middlesex and for England. And with, with that in mind, he must have played a, a quite a, a pivotal part on your early career. 
No, ab absolutely. Especially, I, I joined Middlesex in 1971, which was exactly the time that Mike really took over the captaincy of Middlesex. And although it took me quite a few years to break into the side, it, it, to all intents and purposes, it wasn't surprising because Fred Titmus um, was at Middlesex and, and he was a, a great off spinner, um, a much better off spinner than I was, although I consider myself a good off spinner. I thought Fred was just outstanding and, you know, someone that's taken 2,600 first class wickets, another thousand more than, than me, um, did the double, I think, on six or seven occasions. He was just phenomenal and he kept going. Fortunately for me, he was toward coming at the back end of his career so that when I was right to break into the first team, it was just about the time that Fred was looking to retire. But I had sort of six, seven seasons in the second eleven developing my skills as a, as a spin bowler and developing my batting um, to, 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 to help me in the, in the future. And uh, you mentioned there, obviously, Fred Titmus uh, in, in later years. And we don't really see it too much now, but the, the spin bowling partnerships, but for both co your county and for your country, you had a great partnership with, with Phil Edmonds. Um, you know, particularly, you know, overseas as well, Australia, everywhere. What what was it about that partnership that made it so successful? Well, because the two of us were competing for a place in the test side, um, you know, we obviously we played for Middlesex. We were in a very successful side and we, we had a very good, we had a very good team. We had a, 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 lot, a, a team of individuals, um, but we all knew what our role was. We could um, perform our role consistently as individuals when but if it's brought together by the captain which we had a strong captain in Mike Brealy and we had a strong captain in in Mike Gadding um he they they, they brought the players together and and whatever they did or whatever tactics they employed even if they perhaps occasionally weren't the right ones we had a good enough side that the bowlers were good enough to extricate ourselves from any bad positions and, right. and I think it was generally felt within the team that if we, because we had a crackerjack bowling attack, we felt that whatever we got bowled out for, we had the bowlers to bowl the opposition out cheaper. And that okay. was our attitude. That was our attitude. And, and it helped us all the way through. And I think instilled in us a confidence that we could go out and almost beat anyone when we went out to play. And we played very positive cricket. We always wanted to be um, on the field. Um, playing, we didn't want it to rain, and um, we just felt that you know you can't win championships, take wickets, score runs, or take catches if you're sitting in a dressing room watching the rain come down. So we were a side that always wanted to play and and, and be competitive. I was watching um, something on TV uh, a couple of days ago over the weekend. It was uh, a review of the uh, your uh, second victory in Australia. Uh, the, the tour over there in 86 um, and uh, the, the, I think my Gatting side and uh, it, that, that was a fabulous tour and very successful to it tour, particularly uh, where apparently the press was saying you couldn't bat, couldn't bowl and couldn't feel. Um, you must get asked about it a lot, but that, that must have been one hell of a tour because not just the test matches, but cleaning up in, in the, the one day competitions as well. No, absolutely. And, and we probably didn't go away with our strongest side. I mean, Graham Gooch um, wasn't available for that tour. Um, but when we got there, we, we struggled in the warm-up matches in, in the four-day games against the States. Uh, I think we lost a couple of them. We drew one of them. And going into Brisbane, because we looked a bit of a... We just didn't get it together. Um, we gelled as a side, as individuals. But everyone got on with each other. But strange enough, as soon as that test match started... You know, everything everything seemed to come together. The, 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 the players responded. And, of course, Stuart Broad, Bill Affey, a, a, a new partnership that, that had come together were fantastic. Um, Chris Broad in particular, he scored hundreds in the first three test matches at Brisbane, Adelaide and um, Perth. Uh, and and, and he, he just continued to churn out the runs. And then we had good individual performances, say, from Ian Botham, Philip De Freitas in a partnership in our first innings in Brisbane. Forties, um, sixties and seventies from Broad, Affy, I think Lamy and Gower. And I, I, I happened to get some wickets in Brisbane as well, five or six wickets in one of the innings. 
Yeah. And all of a sudden, we, we end up winning that test match. Both got 100. And the next minute, we're, we're in a position to win the game. And we went out there. We fielded well. And, and to be honest with you, throughout that series, I can't remember us dropping a catch. We, mm -hmm. we were outstanding in the field. I think the highlight um, of that tour, apart from the success in all three competitions that we played in, was our fielding. It was it was absolutely superb. We had good athletes. We had slip fielders that didn't drop drop the catch. Um, we had people in the deep that had good throwing arms, and 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 we had aggression in terms of of Graham Dilly, De Freitas. We had spin that could control the game, and obviously you had Ian Botham that wasn't the Ian Botham of the past, but just having him in your side, mm. it, it just brought everything together and just gave you that much more confidence. Sure. And uh, am I right in saying on that tour, uh, Ian took his family with him and he was staying in, in suites. It's actually costing him costing him money to actually tour Australia with England. Is that right? Well, it probably cost him his tour fee, actually. Um, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, um, one of the good things about Ian was that at the end of every test match, he invited the players up to his room. We, had, we, we always have a team room on tour where players sure. get together and have a drink in the evening and socialise. Uh, but Ian, having, having the suite, um, always invited the players up there. We had drinks up there. And when we'd won the Ashes in Melbourne at the end of that game, Ian invited all the players back to his room in Melbourne. Um, we were very fortunate that Elton John came along to join us. And someone put on one of his, one of his songs uh, on the CD or cassette, whatever it was, at the time and and he he actually didn't like us playing his music and he sent his driver back to the hotel got some of his music and then the driver brought it back and then elton played all the music for us for us to have a good evening he he was brilliant. absolutely brilliant absolutely amazing brilliant. amazing person as you say you had some real characters on that tour and people that played many test matches for England, the likes of you, yourself and Alan Lamb and Mike Gatting and and uh, David Gower and Gower. <laughs> uh, all sorts. But actually, I was thinking, so a couple of years ago, you'll recall with Lashings, we had um, Jack Richards with us for a few games. And uh, obviously, he didn't play a great deal for England, but he's got that on his record. And Ashes winner, scored a century in one of the test matches. And, uh, you know, it, it's fantastic for, for him to be with us a couple of years ago. No, absolutely. And funnily enough, I, I spoke to Jack a couple of years ago and he, he's been working overseas, living overseas yeah. with his wife, Peter. Um, they live in Belgium. They've got a place in Austria. And I spoke to him a couple of nights ago. He's actually in Cornwall and been working in Cornwall for the last yeah. um, couple of years. He's, I think he's chairman of a, 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 a lower division soccer team um, down there and he's, he's involved with the rugby and he was telling me now that Saracens, who I, I support, they've got relegated for next year, that they'll be playing with Cornish Pirates and we should catch up together. But I think things have been a little bit tough over here for Jack and with everything that's going on with COVID-19, um, I think he's looking to go back to, to Belgium and, and, and live back in Belgium, which is, sure. which is sad. And he did play those couple of games for Lashings and it was great for him to turn out and I do remember one match that we played down in Cornwall where he took a great diving catch and it was at the club that he actually started his career at in club cricket. Okay. All oh, right, um, okay. So so he was he was chuffed about that and of course he was the big hero then when he was when he was down there playing against them because he sure. knew all the people. Um yeah, no, and and you know, I spoke to an, a former player that was at Middlesex and played for the West Indies, Larry Gomes. I spoke to him yesterday. He's oh, living wow. in Canada. So a lot of the old players keep in touch with each other. Obviously, yeah. I'm in touch with Graham Gooch all the time as my best mate. I've been communicating with Ian Botham and Jeff Miller in the lockdown. Yeah, so, excellent. So, so a lot of those players sort of keep in touch with each other yeah. and you know just see how each other go and support each other. No, it's fantastic. You mentioned the uh, um, the West Indies. Now you had the opportunity to to captain England um, in 1988. It was that crazy series where West Indies came over, and we, we did we have like four captains throughout that one series. How how did that materialise? Oh, look, you know, I you, you you look back and you have views on on what happened. I I, I think our selection policy was very poor. 
um, and, the, and the way that they dealt with it. You were always looking over your shoulder as, as, as a player that if you had one bad performance or, and, and it doesn't have to be a bad performance. You might get a good ball and you get a low score, 10 or 12, sure. you get 50, 20 in the second innings, but you're out. And, and because you didn't contribute to the overall performance, the, the, the selectors were always looking at someone else. So you're always looking over your shoulder with that fear that you're going to be left out, which is mm. now that the players have central contracts now, that's not the case because they're regarded as the best players in the country. Yeah, uh, And, and it, now they're backed and they play with a lot more confidence. And yes, yeah. they're good players. But because they're backs and they're playing with confidence, saying go out there and play with a little bit more freedom. Whereas sure. I felt that I, I felt that we we didn't because we were always looking over our shoulder with a fear of being left out of the side. Yeah. If someone had if someone had patted us on the shoulder and said, "Look, you're going to play for the rest of the series, regardless of what's happened. You're the best player we've got, the best bowl we've got," then you know I, I, you would have felt a lot more confidence going out there and. You know, I got criticised in my career. Some people said, "Oh, I, I bowled very flat, bowled very defensively." Um, that that I don't think that was the case, and I think it reflected that because I didn't bowl too many bad balls, and my strength was I had good control. I wasn't yeah. a big spinner of the ball. I had good control, and therefore didn't bowl bad balls. So players played me on merit, um, and I was very economical. And, and and people see that as as being dull. I, I mm. took wickets. You know, I look back on my test career and I feel very, very disappointed that um, I didn't do better. I feel that I underachieved as an international bowler. Um, I took 147 wickets in the 64 test matches I played. I think there were, there, there were obviously innings that I didn't bowl in. There was some match, one match in India, a Jubilee test match, I didn't bowl at all. Um, you couldn't get the ball out of Ian Botham's hand. And I think mm. Ian picked up 13 or 14 wickets in that match. And and I just played a bit part. I went to bed at nine o'clock at night. I think Ian went to bed about four o'clock in the morning every <laughs> night of that test match. He scored 100. He got 13 wickets. I went to bed at nine o'clock, didn't bowl and scored seven. So, you know, mm. where's, where's the fairness in that? <laughs> <laughs> you should have done it the other way around, John. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and, yeah. you know, it, you know, just going back to Ian, and, and he was he was a remarkable player, and um, he he didn't know what India was like. It was his first Test match in India, first time he'd been there, and he'd heard all the stories about travelling there, and he, he'd already sort of had in his mind about what India was going to be like, and and mm. he adapted to what he thought he was going to be like. So he he got he, he had a few drinks every night, and if he came in at four o'clock, he probably had a few more on top of that as well. Wow! But it's well, there you it's go. Still, it didn't affect him on the field. Well, he was just, he was literally a one-off, wasn't he? In, in in many different ways, many different ways. I want to ask you um, just about lashings, really. So, when and how did you get involved with with lashings World Eleven? Well, when I stopped coaching with Middlesex, which is in two thousand and eight, um, I think one of the things about being a cricketer and playing the um, number of years that I played twenty five years, twenty seven years actually. Um, from joining Middlesex in 1971, finishing in um, 1997 um, as player coach at Northamptonshire. So 27 seasons involved in the professional game. When you come out of it, you think, well, actually, what am I actually qualified in doing when, when I come out? So my thoughts were that I've got to stay involved in the game. I wanted to get involved in coaching, um, but it was getting an opportunity to go somewhere and do it. And Northamptonshire gave me that opportunity in 1996. So I left Middlesex at the end of 1995 and I went as coach and then was persuaded or asked if I'd um, play as well and play as player coach. So I was persuaded in Excellent. doing that, which I, which I did. But to my detriment as well, I also got invited by England to be assistant coach to David Lloyd on two winter tours in 96-7 and 97-98, sure. which, which took me away from the important time of the year, January, February, March, and a little bit into April, of when you want to spend time with your county players in, in working with them and preparing them for the beginning of those summers. Yeah, sure. And I, was, sure. And, and I, wasn't, I wasn't there. So it, and also playing 
when you're playing as a, as a player coach, you've also got you 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 found that you weren't devoting enough time to the players as a coach, and then you weren't devoting enough time to your own game um, to mm. to maintain your skills, especially when you're getting that little bit older as well. So, sure. you know, I look back on that little brief, you know, three years um, that I had with Northamptonshire, as as probably a mistake playing as a um, coach player. The third year, um, I, I did it just as a coach. Um, right. Then I left Northamptonshire, did a bit of television with Sky, and then got involved with Middlesex as coach in 2001 yeah. through, through to the um, end of 2007. Um, went to India and um, coached in the ICL for two tournaments. Um, wow. Which was, a, which was a precursor to the IPL. Yeah. Um, and then... When the IPL, uh, ICL folded, I came back to England and wanted to get involved in coaching again, but there was there was just nothing available. So it was mm. very difficult. So I freelanced from mm. 2008, and I thought, well, I, I've got to do something. Um, I still felt I could play and contribute on the cricket field. Um, and then there was an opportunity to play at Lashings. I played some games, enjoyed it. I, one thing as a cricketer, when you've been playing as long as I have, is that you you miss the banter and the camaraderie that you get in the dressing room and on the field. And it yeah. was one thing that um, when I got back into that dressing room with lashings, it just felt it just felt great. Um, Do you know what, John? That's been a common theme um, in terms of talking to, to the lashings players in recent weeks, and you know, actually really enjoying being back in the changing room and the camaraderie and things like that. Well, how would you describe it, though? Because I know, obviously, obviously, you'd like to play club cricket as well. But is there a difference when you're playing when in the change room and everyone in there with you is a fellow international cricketer? You may not have played with and against some of the players um, in there too much through your careers, but ultimately, you, you all have that in common. You've all played international cricket. Is there something different about that vibe in the change room? Well, the only thing different is I feel like a granddad to some of the other players. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's I enjoy it when Gordon Greenwich walks into the dressing room because he's a bit sure. older than me. Um, yeah. So there's an interesting question that of all the um, players that play for lashings, um, I played with one of them for South of England schools. Okay. In 1970, no, 1967. And right. So, think, can anyone can anyone guess who that was? Well, off the bat, so to speak, I'm thinking Smithy, David Smith. But is no, that not wrong. right? No, it's Gordon Greenwich. Oh, okay. Because of course, Gordon, yes. Gordon, Gordon yeah. was living in Reading as a as a young young lad. Um, came over from Barbados with his with his parents, and Gordon was a good cricketer. And we we just met up then. Didn't know it. Didn't know each mm. other from Adam. Um, then obviously. Um, Years passed, and we played against each other. When Gordon played for Hampshire, and myself, Middlesex, and and all of a sudden now we're we're thrown together again at lashings. Um, and all I can say about Gordon, he's changed. He used to be a moody bugger when he played, mm. um, but he's far from that now. He wants to get involved in everything. He's got he's got a really good sense of humour. Yeah, he's got some great stories. Um, yeah, he's just great to, great to be around. And I think you know with the lashings players. I still want to, and one of the reasons I play is that I still want to be competitive. Um, I played some other cricket which wasn't played seriously, um, and I found that lashings played to win, and they played to enjoy themselves. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to do. I still wanted to bowl well. I didn't want to play in charity matches that you're just lobbing the ball up so someone can mm. pan you all over the park. So lashings for me was absolutely ideal um and when you're playing against clubs clubs don't want to face lashings players that spinners lobbing a ball up and giving them no points. 15 they fielders and all to, of that nonsense they actually no. want to feel the challenge of those players whether they're bowlers coming in being aggressive bowling fast still yep. bowling quality spin obviously i'm not the same bowler that i was but you know, I I still don't like giving runs away. I still have the same philosophy playing for lashings as I did when I played for Middlesex in England. I just don't mm. like going for runs. I'd mm. sooner be hit for two fours in an over 
than I would going for four singles. Mm. If I was going for four singles, I felt as if I was being milked around and I wasn't controlling the game. Whereas if I got hit for two fours in the over, the batsman's either played a good shot or I've bowled a bad ball. And mm. I could accept that, but I couldn't accept being worked around for four singles, yeah. which is which is bloody ridiculous. And we were talking, uh, we had one of these uh, interviews with Martin, well, a few of us were on it. One of them was Martin Bickner. We haven't actually released it yet. And we were talking about spinners that, that have played and played for lashings. And Martin was saying as captain that he's lost count of the times where he felt where we batted first and, and that the opposing side of really looking like they're going to win the game and he's thrown the ball to you and count ball to you and countless times you've bowled bowled lashings out of trouble. So you're re still putting it on a sixpence, still really performing. And do you see yourself playing for, for a few more years to come? Well look, as I said, I'm sixty seven now. Um wow. sixty eight in August. Um and I've 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 given myself a target. So okay. I hope I'll hope you haven't. We haven't discussed this yet, John. So I'll, no, I'm looking forward no. to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm broaching the subject with you now, then, because nice. I'd, this I'd is like the best to... way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'd, ideally, I'd like to play until I'm seventy. It, and, uh -huh. and the reason for that is I, I play a little bit of golf, but not enough. I don't do enough physical exercise, and I think the little bit of cricket that I play for lashings, um, playing around young people young people makes me feel younger um it gives me exercise it gives me the competition that i want as well um and it keeps me enthusiastic and it keeps me going so i just want to go along for another another couple of years if i can get into my 70th year then that would be fantastic but i've got to try and stay fit i've got to see, keep fit in the winter so that i'm fit to play in the summer um, so I'm going to have to play a little bit more golf, I think. Do you know, I, I recall we played a game in Wiltshire on your 65th birthday, I believe, a couple of years ago. And I felt so sorry for you because it absolutely teamed it down all day, didn't it? Dreadful yeah. weather. But um, well, we, we did, did play. A good old party. We did play. We did play. We, we could have had a good old party then. But um, we certainly will do. Uh, when your 70th, 70th comes around. I just want to finish up by asking you, uh, we've got this section coming up called Lock In with Lashings. We're doing it with all the guys, and it's literally some quick-fire questions um, just to get your take on these subjects. So, first few are all kind of to do with lockdown. So, the first question is, who in the lashing squad would you least like to spend 12 weeks in isolation with? <laughs> Um, Monty. Monty. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can. Um, I can imagine that. I can imagine that. Um, being in lockdown and and obviously they're releasing a few things, relaxing the the uh, guidelines a little bit now. But what what have you missed the most uh, through being in lockdown? I think not catching up with players that I played with against. Um, and also the smiles on people's faces um, at the grounds that we play at when we're having the yeah. lunch beforehand and we're on the table and you know, they're enthusiastic on the table. They're always asking you questions. I miss that. I miss the chat. I miss the banter. Um, sure. And the competition. So, I mean, I mentioned those sort of things earlier. That's, that's what I miss about the summer okay. and not playing cricket with lashings. No, well, we'll see. I'm hopeful we might get one or two games at the end of the season, even if we don't have the lunch, but we'll see how it goes. But we will have a bumper season next season with all of this year's games and all of the organic games for next year as well. So uh, we we'll look, we'll look forward to getting back together. These are yep. the more quickfire ones, um, yep. just to finish off with. So do you prefer, in normal world, do you prefer staying in or going out? Staying in. Staying in. Uh, surf or turf? Surf or turf? Surf. Surf, okay. Um, golf or cricket? <laughs> well, cricket was a profession. Um, yeah. Golf is an activity. Golf. Okay. Uh, sunglasses or cap? Cap. Yeah. Um, auto or manual? Auto. Okay. Right, I think you're going to say neither to this one. Facebook or Twitter? 
None. Okay. And I'm not sure about this one either. KFC or McDonald's? KFC. Oh, you like some KFC. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Tom, in the essence of time, thank you ever so much uh, for joining us. You mentioned there about playing for lashings until you're 70. We'd love to have you playing with lashings for as long as you want to. And then when you're not playing, we still would want you at the games, have you involved in everything. You're great to be around, around great to have around, a great mentor for everyone, the players, the staff, the, the youngsters at the ground and everyone uh, playing against us as well. So um, a, a wonderful store of lashings as well as being uh, one of the legendary cricketers in this country. So thank you for joining us. And um, <clears throat> we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, Fitz. Very kind words. And if I, when I do play, um, if we do play at the end of the year, this will be gone. <laughs> oh, no, I'd like to see it. We'll see. We'll see. I'll try and talk you into keeping it for one game. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, John. Take care. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.